Hello again and welcome back to my channel. It's been a minute. Today I wanted to talk about hosting the N8N platform on the render.com website hosting company. So we're going to take a look first of all at a couple things here about N8N and also their pricing and then I will go to the pricing page on render.com and then we'll go through the whole process of getting it up and running on render.com. NAN is a really awesome tool. As they say here, flexible AI workflow automation for technical teams. It gives you all this freedom to implement multi-step AI agents and integrate apps more than any other tool. So here we can see like a user interface drag and drop, low code, lots of benefits. We can plug AI into our own data and over 500 different integrations. As they say here, the fast way to actually get AI working in your business, chat with our own data, build multi-step agents calling custom tools, we can self-host if need be, so we can protect data on-prem, deploy with Docker, access the entire source code on GitHub, and hosted versions are available. And we'll look at those prices. Code when you need to and use the UI when you don't. You can write JavaScript or Python. You can always fall back to code, add libraries from NPM. They have case studies here. Automation for your customers. While your customers with access to 500 app integrations to automate their own workflows with your company's branding and their white labeled technology. As they say here, there's nothing you can't automate with NAN. With 500 different integrations, that's probably true. Let's look at the pricing now. I have it set to monthly, but there's also an annual price. The annual price saves 17%. So if we look at the pricing here, the starter plan is $24 a month. And the pro plan is $60 a month. And the business jumps way up to $800. And then anything other than that, of course, you have to contact their sales. Here we can see on the left side, what the starter pack looks like. You get only one shared project with five concurrent executions, unlimited users, and support from the forum. For $60 a month, build monthly, we can see you get three shared projects, 20 concurrent executions, seven days of insights, which you don't get those here on the cheaper platform, admin roles, global variables, which can be quite important, workflow history, and execution search. So there we have the pricing from the NAN platform. Now let's take a look at the pricing on render.com. I've made other videos that talk about render.com. If you want to take a look at those, you can search on the YouTube channel for Scott DevOps. So here we can see the hobby plan is $0. The professional plan is 19 organization plan 29 and then of course they have custom pricing we can see the features here you do get quite a lot even for the $19 a month we're gonna go with the cheapest possible plan here and below here there is a very long scrolling page if you've never used render.com I would encourage you to check it out you can deploy some things for free in our case we're gonna need to use what's called a persistent disk and because of that, we're going to have to pay some money to host this up here. But again, it's going to be cheaper than hosting it on NAN itself. So here we can see lots of different features. Render is very powerful. I've used it for hosting other projects in the past. I really like it. I would say it's more simple at a high level. The user interface and controlling all of it is more straightforward and more simple than other platforms that I've used.
let's go to the main page. I'm going to go ahead and close the pricing page now. And we'll go to the main page here and just take a quick look at render. So you can deploy apps and APIs and AI workloads in minutes. And I've seen that from working with it in the past, how fast it is because it's a more simplified interface than some of the other providers that are out there. They do have built-in preview environments, auto scaling if you need that, private networking if you need that. It's available with a couple mouse clicks. We can see companies that are using this product. We can run complex apps without complex infrastructure, which is actually really nice. Well, let's go ahead and get started on getting NAN up and running on this platform. I do want to point out this issue where the web service, which is what we're going to use, will spin down on idle for all of the free web services. If you don't want that to happen, you do have to pay for one of those other accounts that we looked at on the pricing page. Or you can just live with the fact that it will spin down on idle after 15 minutes. Also, they do give you 750 free instance hours for each workspace per calendar month. And a free web service consumes these hours as long as it's running. Spun down services don't consume free instance hours. So if you're using the free and it shuts itself down after 15 minutes, then it stops using those. Since we're going to be using a persistent disk, I thought I would talk about it a little bit here from their documentation. It is one of their data stores they make available. The persistent disk preserves your services file system changes across deploys. You can attach a persistent disk to a paid render web service, which is what we're going to do. By default, render services have an ephemeral file system. This means without a persistent disk, any changes you make to a service's local file or files are lost every time the service redeploys or restarts, which is not what we want. To run at a NAN, we're going to have to have this persistent disk. And it is they're useful for like our web service, as we're going to see. I'm going to walk through the process. They do point out here that persistent disk use the same high performance SSD as render. Postgres and the key value instances. All disks are encrypted at rest. Click advance at the bottom of the creation form or anytime after creation from your services disk page. Let's move on to a little bit more information about render in case you've never used it. I like this flow chart here. It's just on their service types page. If we just scroll down a little bit, you can see this flow chart. It asks a series of questions. Will your app receive traffic from public internet? Yes or no. No. Is it going to receive private network traffic from your other render services? Yes or no. In our case, we are going to. So does our app consist entirely of statically served files? Yes or no. Create a static site or no. It includes service side logic. So create a web service. The web service is the most common service type. Dynamic web apps with a public on render.com subdomain for receiving traffic over HTTP. I've now moved to my dashboard screen where we can see options to create a new service. We're going to choose web service and go through that path. Also, I am following along with a setup guide that Render provides on their website and I'll include a link to that in the description if you want to follow along with their article as I will be doing here. Now I'm going to create the web service, create new web service button or link. Then I'm going to choose existing image and I'm going to paste in the URL for the NAN latest image that we're going to download. We don't need credentials since it's public. So let's click connect. Here we need to give it a name, which is NAN colon latest. If you want to, you can add this web service that we're creating 
to a project in your own system. I'm not going to do that in this case. You pick the service area. I'll choose Oregon US West. And here is the instance type that matters since we can't deploy persistent disk to a free project or instance, we have to use the starter pack, which is $7 a month. And here you can see the other prices for the other levels. Standards 25, you get four times the RAM and double the CPU, and you can see the other prices here. All paid instances support zero downtime, SSH access, scaling, one-off jobs, and support for persistence disk, which is important for what we need. So I'll go ahead and select starter. And now for environment variables, we need to add in a value there. I'm gonna grab that from their guide. Here, according to their guide, you need to put in an environment variable called port with a value of 5678. This is the default port that the N8N listens on. Now they do say this step is not strictly necessary because render can detect your services HTTP port automatically, but it does speed up your first deploy. So we're gonna go ahead and leave that here. Next, I'm going to click on the advanced option. I'm gonna scroll down and look for the option to add our persistent disk. Let's go ahead and click on add disk and fill in the information that it needs here. Next, we're going to set the disk mount path to this path here, slash home, slash node. By default, NAN will store its data in a .NAN directory under this path. Only data under the mount path is persisted across deploys. Changes to other parts of the file system are lost when the service is redeployed. You can store N8N data in a different directory by setting the line N8N underscore user underscore folder environment variable. And if you do that, you need to modify your disk mount path to match, but we're not going to do any of that. I chose the one gig file size for now. We can always increase it later if needed. And finally, I'm going to scroll down to the bottom and I'm going to click deploy the web service. I'm going to pause the video if need be. Here we can see that it is giving it a URL. We can see we're on the starter pack. We can see that it's in progress and that it's deploying what we asked it to do here for N8N. So I will come back when it's done. I did want to mention something else that I've noticed from render while we're waiting for that to finish over here the render mcp server you can manage your render infrastructure directly from compatible ai apps that may be something you want to look into i'm going to cover that in another video later it looks like it finished and i will go ahead and click the view and we'll let it load up i clicked on the link that you saw on the other screen and here it's taking me to the setup owner account. I'm gonna go ahead and fill this out and then I'll click next. I filled out the information there and now it wants me to fill out the customized NAN to me. I'll go ahead and fill these out and then click get started. I filled that out and the next screen here says get paid features for free forever. Receive a free activation key for the advanced features below. Lifetime access workflow history, review and restore any workflow version from the last 24 hours, advanced debugging, easily fix any workflow execution that's aired, then rerun it, execution, search and tagging, search and organize past workflow executions for easier review, and folders, organize your workflows in nested folder structure. I'm gonna go ahead and get that license key so I have it for later. I went ahead and did that and here in the bottom right of the screen it says check your email and it lists your email and then you can look for your key there. Then you see the link here, then head over to your usage and plan to activate your license. I'm going to go ahead and do that and be right back. Next I'm on that screen, usage, 
and plan. You're on the community edition. Unlock selected paid features for free forever. I'm going to go ahead and enter my activation key and we'll go from there. When I tried to enter in the key that I got in the email, it gave an error. So I went ahead in that email that I got and clicked on a link that said to activate the key. So I clicked that and it opened up a local host web browser. But within that URL in my web browser, it has a key. So I copied that key instead. And I'll compare it here off screen and see what it looks like. Basically, it looks the same to me. It did work once I copied it from that localhost web browser tab that it opened when I clicked activate license key from my email. It was telling me here on this screen that it was in the wrong format. I'm not sure why it did that, but just in case that happens to you, that's what you can do. Go to your email, click activate license key. It'll pop open a browser tab. In there, you'll see key equals, and then it'll have your key. I copied it from there and pasted it in here. Now we can see I've registered my email to unlock additional features on my community plan. That's good. I've clicked down into this area of my NAN instance where you can install community nodes. So I can click browse here. And from there we can see there's over a thousand packages it says here for all kinds of different things. Just wanted to point out that that is available there. Also here we can create an API key. We can give it a name. And as you can see here, we, we would have to upgrade to unlock the ability to modify API key scopes. But here I can click on this list and we can see all the ones that are available. There's quite a lot there. I'm not going to create a key now, but just wanted to point that out. There's a lot of other settings that can be configured here in the settings section of my NAN instance running on render.com. I'm back on the home page now. I can click on templates. Here we can see pre-built agents or we can view all templates. There's also tutorial templates. I'm gonna go ahead and click on view all templates. Here we can see there's 5,612 workflow automation templates. And we can search for all kinds of different things in here. Almost endless it seems. If I scroll down just a little bit, we can see Newcomer Essentials, Learn by Doing, Build Your First AI Agent, Learn NAN Basics in Three Easy Steps, Personal Life Manager with Telegram, Google Services, and Voice Enabled AI, Talk to Your Google Sheets Using ChatGPT5, and the list goes on endlessly. So you might want to check in here to find something interesting to build in your N8N. I accidentally closed the N8N instance, so in order to get back there, you just have to come back to your dashboard here and you can click these three little dots and you can go to settings and then from there you'll find the link to the N8N instance that's running inside of this render account. I went ahead and clicked on the link that they showed and I'm back in my N8N instance. Well, there's a lot more I could do in this video, but I don't want it to be too long since the focus of it mainly was to show the pricing and to show how to set this thing up inside of the render environment and basically how easy it is. In another future video, I will go ahead and spin this up again and try a pre-built agent and we'll go ahead and deploy one to our render account. Well, I thank you for stopping by. I've been really busy and I'm hoping to make some more videos soon about this and other cool technologies. Thanks again for stopping by. Thanks for watching and thanks for subscribing. Have a great day. If you like this channel, please like and subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified when I post new content.